Before we start in today's episode, I just want to let you guys know that I've been working on a new, I guess, an online course teaching people how to do the things that I'm doing with these companies, how to go through the financials, how to identify the right companies, the right behaviors for growth stocks, uh, and to uh, to rip apart the financial statements and pick the best companies that you can. If that's something that you would be interested in getting involved in, uh, drop me an email at chris at thecleantrader.com. It's not available anywhere else. Uh, I've literally just pretty much finished recording it now. It's going up online in the next week. And uh, if you're interested in getting involved in it, then drop me an email and I'll send you over some details. Chris at thecleantrader.com. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a company called Diageo PLC, a beverage company, a very popular company amongst investors. You'll see why very shortly. Okay, hey there guys, welcome to episode number 20 of the FTSE show with me, Chris Chillingworth. Uh, welcome to my log cabin, self-built, I will add, uh, put all this together myself, which I'm very proud of. Um, this is my trading cabin, this is where I do all my trading, this is where I do my analysis and my research, and it's where I read my books. Um, and uh, obviously, obviously uh, recording YouTube videos as well. Uh, today, I want to talk to you and show you my research on Diageo PLC, uh, Epic Code DGE. In comparison to the other companies we've been looking at, especially the ones at the bottom, uh, which have had tens, if not 20, 30 million worth of shares a day being traded in them, very, very popular companies. Diageo are relatively popular in the investment circles because of their history, because of their performance so far, uh, but still only about 5 million shares traded a day, so far fewer than the likes of Centrica, the likes of uh, Rolls-Royce, uh, the likes of BP and Tesco. Uh, they don't nowhere close. Um, but Diageo are a company that I think you will enjoy looking through the numbers of. Uh, just to give you a bit of perspective, in the last year, we've seen a 20% drop off on uh, share price growth. But over the last five years, they're up 31%. So you can imagine prior to the 2020 crash, uh, where they were and how well they were doing. Uh, but what it does do is it means there is an opportunity to get involved in this company and become an owner of this company or joint owner. Um, and so watch this episode with some focus and uh, let's take a look at the numbers. Okay, let's take a look at Diageo PLC then. Epic Code DGE, they're in the FTSE 100 and they're in the consumer non-durables sector, which uh, I'm not sure why it says that because uh, clearly they're a beverage company. They're in the, the, the beverages company uh, sector. Um, so revenue, first of all, definitely looking pretty solid uh, from 8 billion up to 12.8 billion. And uh, there is some steady, consistent growth there from 2008 to 2019. Uh, certainly in the last five years, we've gone from 10.8 up to 12.8. So a couple of billions worth of growth there over the last five years, which I'm pretty happy with. That looks pretty solid. Um, looking at the actual margin, then the percentage of the slice of pie that these guys are getting to keep, I would argue here that we've definitely seen some increase over the last five years from 57.4% up to 622 and that is some pretty solid growth there. So the slice of the pie that they're keeping is increasing. What that essentially means is that revenue is going up. Cost of sales is also going up, but not at such a fast rate. Uh, and therefore, they're making more and more money every year or they're getting to keep more and more of their revenue every single year which is exactly what we want to see so this is a really good start from Diageo so far um, looking at expenses expenses have been sitting quite historically at around uh, about 54 percent 55 54 percent which is in itself is a healthy level more than happy with that uh, in recent years however that has seen a decline from 56 in 2014 down to 54.9, 54.4, 51 51.7, down to 51, and then 49.5. So for the first time in over 12 years, Diageo's expenses have dropped below 50% of their gross profit, uh, which is fantastic. This is the kind of, you know, one, this is consistency. These guys are staying consistent. We all kind of know what to expect from Diageo each year. Uh, that doesn't mean that the unforeseen or some sort of spike can't happen, 
but we can we we can become accustomed to this kind of numbers if they're this consistent over 12 years uh and certainly including the 28 2009 financial crisis where you know this looks largely unaffected um so yeah we can be pretty consistent here by looks things uh Diageo showing some consistency but also a trend a consistent trend going down from 56.5 to 49.5 percent of their gross profit being spent on expenses now expenses financially speaking aren't going down as such we're not seeing a reduction there it's just go it's not uh, the the rate of growth of the expenses is at a slower rate than the revenue going up and the gross profit increasing so this is great again we're not expecting expenses necessarily to go down we just don't want them to go up faster than the the growth of the company so otherwise it starts to get far too expensive well this is going in the opposite direction the company are growing faster than the cost of expenses are so that's great that's exactly what we want to see no issues of R&D and depreciation. Interest on debt is at a very manageable level of 6.5% and has been for quite some time at manageable levels and uh, a level that we wouldn't be particularly concerned about at all. Um, and then we come down to net earnings where this is a company making 22.4% uh, net earnings a year for their shareholders. And that's after extraneous income has been removed. So they're actually reporting higher figures because they have to because of accountancy, accountancy law uh, and the way things work. But we're omitting extraneous circumstances to get a truer picture and we're just looking at what is their everyday recurring revenue or recurring business actually achieving uh, in terms of profit. And that's the number we're looking at. So they're 22.4%. It's actually better than that, but this is just the raw kind of what's their everyday business actually achieving. And that's a really healthy figure. Any company making tw over 20% uh, return a year and consistently uh, is a very, very good business. And I'm very happy with that. So all in all, the income statement looking really strong for Diageo. Looking at the balance sheet, uh, what am I more interested in here? Well, I always very interested in the debt. Uh, I want to know what kind of debt levels this company is are carrying. Uh, Short-term debt, we're looking at 1.9 billion, and then long-term debt, Diageo are carrying 10.5 billion. So to me, that's that's a lot of money, right? So how do we work out whether or not that's too much? And the way I do that is I look at the net earnings to long-term debt ratio. Essentially, all that essentially means is how long is it going to take them to pay off that debt based on their earnings power? Because if they're making a ton of money and they're making a ton of profit, then they can afford to take on a relatively large amount of debt. If they're not making much money, they shouldn't be biting off more than they can chew. They should not have so much debt. This is a company that can afford the amount of debt that they're carrying. So the simple system tells me that we're looking at about 3.7 years for them to pay that off based on the net in net earnings power, which is a ratio that I am comfortable with, a ratio that I'm happy with. So I'm cool with that. Uh, 10.5 billion is sounds like a lot of money, but for a company that's making 2.8 to 3 billion a year, it wouldn't take them that long to pay off that long term debt. And this is debt that doesn't have to be paid within the next year. It's longer term than that. So. They're carrying debt that they're able to pay off by the looks of things. So that's absolutely fine. Um, and then we've got the equity, the shareholder equity. So this is assets minus liabilities equals net worth. What's the net worth of the business? Well, back in 2008, it was 4.1 billion. It's now gone all the way up to 10.1 billion. We've seen a bit of a decline in the last three years. So that's interesting. Might be the increase in debt that's caused a, a large chunk of that. Uh, but that debt, like I say, is still within the boundaries of what I'm looking for. Uh, and then I want to look at retained earnings. So essentially, where is the, the company are making a certain amount of money for the shareholders, the directors, then take that profit and they have to decide what to do with it. And they'll pay dividends. They will buy back some of their own shares to reduce the number that are in circulation. That's one tactic some companies use, not all do. Uh, they can buy some assets to increase profits in the future. So buy, buy more uh, assets like property, plant and equipment or intangible assets like licenses and rights and trademarks to increase the profit that's coming into the business. Um, or final option is they can put it into retained earnings. This is a pot of money that they can use for acquisitions in the future. They can use the rainy day fund and they're sitting on 3.8 billion. Overall, their average growth over the last five years in their retained earnings pot is 14.1%. So that's a very decent chunk of their profit being pumped into retained earnings. They're seeing a 14% 
increase in the retained earnings value every year. So pretty good, pretty happy with that. And then in terms of capital expenditure, they don't really spend too high on that. That's perfectly acceptable levels. So let's go and take a look at the chart. So Diageo clearly doing very well, ticking all the boxes pretty much on what I look for in a growth company, growth stock. And uh, as we can see here, we've definitely seen some growth in this company back in 2008 when we started looking at the data. This is a company sitting at uh, about £10 a share. During the financial crisis, we saw that drop down to about £7 a share, but it certainly recovered and it had recovered by pretty much the end of 2009. So it didn't take that long to recover. And then since then, they've just been flying. Since uh, September 2019, we've definitely seen a drop off. I'm not sure why that would be with Diageo because their 2019 numbers have looked very strong. Uh, and, you know, it's an increase in net earnings and an increase in revenue. So I would say this still looks very, very healthy financial, financially speaking. Uh, they did buy a chunk of, uh, they did spend a chunk of retained earnings. So the only downside I can really see, and it's not necessarily even a downside. So financially speaking, I think they look very, very strong. Uh, not sure, therefore, why we've seen a drop off from 29, September 2019 down to uh, Feb February 2020. Obviously, since February 2020, we've seen a major drop off in the uh, share price of pretty much every company out there due to the uh, the pandemic. Uh, but uh, but that is no reflection on Diageo as a business or any of the companies essentially that this has happened to. Um, and you can see the recovery so far has been pretty strong. They fell all the way to £21 a share and they're now already up to £25 a share. So that's pretty pretty solid. Uh, obviously, we don't know if that's going to crash back down again, depending on what's going to go on with all of this stuff that's going out in the news. But um, as a business, Diageo for me are still a very strong company, still posting very strong numbers and they've clearly been a growth stock all the way from you know, 2008, sort of £10 a share up to £36 a share. Uh, over the last 10, 12 years, that's solid. That is a kind of growth stock that I'm interested in, uh, and it certainly has been. And for me, there's nothing in the financials that would make me feel like there is a major problem here, or that this company has suddenly become a bad business. And so this is more, for me, this is more of an opportunity. This is more of an opportunity for me to be able to get in back on 2017's prices. I mean, I think it's still expensive, uh, but we are able to get in at 2017's prices, and that's an opportunity that, you know, prior to this, we would not have had the opportunity to get in at that price. So, uh, yeah, I'm very happy with this, and I think they're going to score pretty well on the leaderboard, but let's go and take a look. So one of the best companies we've seen in quite some time, I'd say, uh, and uh, financially speaking, lots of green boxes, lots of ticks in the boxes that I'm looking for. This is a company that are... Uh, very much the kind of company that I'm interested in from a long term growth perspective. Uh, and uh, as a kind of a disclaimer, I suppose I should say that I am a shareholder in Diageo and have been for quite some time. Uh, they have I've done very well off the of, uh, of the rise in share price over the last few years. Obviously, that's taken a hit in recent times, uh, but we're still up and we're still still going. And I still uh, I've seen nothing that would indicate uh, it's time to get out of Diageo. The numbers all look very, very solid. And I'm purely focused on facts. I don't want to hear people's opinions. I'm not interested in what people think is going to happen with Diageo. Let's see what the numbers actually tell us. Uh, they give us so much more information. You know, I'm reading a book about Warren Buffett at the moment uh, and Charlie Munger, the guys from Berkshire Hathaway. And they, they one of their principles is, you know, look, we're looking for a competitive, durable advantage in a company that we're after, uh, or a company that we want to invest in for the long term. And the numbers will tell us whether or not they have a competitive advantage based on the, the performance of that business. So, uh, you know, numbers are very, very useful in identifying this sort of stuff. Um, so let's get them up on the leaderboard. OK, so DGE, Diageo PLC, score. Oh, it's so close. So close. <laughs> Diageo. PLC, I thought they would score pretty highly on this based on those numbers. Score a very impressive one to one points, which puts them in second place, just behind Taylor Wimpy. 
Give me a moment whilst I have to move every single one of these little things down one. Christ. Okay, listen, if you're a stunning, uh, very attractive brunette, then I'm very much in need of an assistant for managing this board because that is just, I mean, I should go digital, I think. But uh, anyway, DGE, Diageo PLC, have jumped straight in at second place, knocking everything down one. Episode number 20, we've got a very solid company there. Uh, I would say two very solid companies that are definitely worth your time there in Taylor Wimpy and Diageo to take a look at. Uh, and uh, some interesting share prices right now as well. So do your own research, of course. Do your own due diligence. Don't just take my word for it. That's something you should never do. But based on uh, on my analysis, these are two very solid companies, and I think you could uh, do much worse with these businesses as a long-term sort of 10, 20-year shareholding uh, process and period. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it useful as always. If you want to get in touch, please email me at chris at thecleantrader.com. Don't forget, if you're interested in learning how to do this, it's something that I've started to teach now. Uh, if you would be interested in getting involved, and drop me an email and I'll send you some details. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in episode number 21. Cheers, guys. Oh, 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 oh,